Alright, so I've been working on um, some uh, doors, basically, and here is my door. Um, <clears throat> you can see uh, the doors are slightly open to begin with. This is actually intentional. And for now, I haven't gotten to uh, triggering them yet. I'm just getting the code down for you know opening them and closing them. It's a bit different uh, to how it was in Leadworks. In Leadworks, you could uh, set just a uh, move object and you'd move the doors or, or whatever. However, in Essential, you're dealing a lot more with matrices and you have to do all the relative um, movement yourself, which isn't too bad. Um, it's a bit more of a learning curve. However, once you, once you know the function to get relative uh, positions from a, a matrix, then it's, it's easy. So what I've done now just to test this is I've just, I've just, just bound the uh, 1, 2, and 3 keys for um, opening and closing the uh, door. So let's give it a go. So I'll press 1. You can see it closes it. And the smoothing there wasn't too good. I've used a power uh, linear interpolation. Oh, well, it's not really linear if it's power. A power interpolation. And, um, of course, that's the wrong one because it starts off really slow and then goes really fast. And if I press 2, it'll open it fully. However, going back so far, I haven't... The interpolation's not working, so I'll have to fix that. And if I press 3, it'll go to half closed. The cool thing about this door um, that I'm making is that you can set the amount of openness it has and because it's a stateful object it'll have a bunch of different states open, closed, locked, broken which will be like you'll try and open it and it'll only open a little bit and then erratic where it basically is just malfunctioning completely and it's just opening and closing and, and etc. So currently got a problem with that uh, interpolation and it going the wrong way but also there's another problem and that is if you for some reason set an opening amount that is the same as what it currently is um, for example it's the open amount is 1.0 so 100% open if I press the 2 button again to set it to 100% open again it stuffs it up so the doors are completely gone now so I have to fix that. Can't seem to see them anywhere. So I'm just gonna go and play around in the code and see how it is. I also want to show you um, just how um, cool the essential is at you know getting this kind of stuff going in a sec. All right, so now I'm inside the essential editor, and this at the side is sort of my my content browser. But it's not just a content browser for assets, it's a content browser for all the code in the game, including the engine headers. Um, don't mind me. And <clears throat> so here's my application Nano, and here's all sorts of other stuff. I'll just collapse it all quickly. Now, if we go to assets, let's have a look at my gate. Uh, my gate is just a frame to start with. And it has a physics body which you can auto generate which is super convenient um, you can also if you want I oh, don't worry about that now here's also something else now a simple sort of a capable of this sort of fake scripting which I love because I hate scripting but I would love the benefits with C++ and so this is sort of how it works so you create these object classes in the editor and I created one called obj underscore gate and I'll open that up and basically it's a table of data and I can add and change any type of um, data in here that I want I can make it a bool, string, element, etc which is really cool so um, and then I can set what it is by default and you can see also here under element that is actually another asset so what I've done here is <coughs> I've actually dragged and dropped the doors, so uh, the left and right doors into that element slot, which means that I'll be able to load it up later. So, and you can also set what it's drawn as, so mesh, um, and if it uh, is included in the path uh, nav mesh generation. So you make the base class. Now that base class can be used for any sort of gate. 
Now what happens is I have my gate frame and if I go up to here and I click on params I can choose what type of class this object is and I've specified here that it's a gate. And then all of a sudden these um, all the parameters come up and with their default values and if I want I can change them individually by ticking the custom button and actually changing it so um, like that. Now this is where it gets even more um, diverse. I can now go into the world editor and I'm going to my level and just turn the lights on, turn the sun and sky on so we can see it better. And actually, sorry, I'll just turn the ambience on out of black. Alright. Um, and now you can see I've placed that wall, um, I'm sorry, the, the gate or door in the scene by simply dragging and dropping. And you can see in the scene that I can still access that and I can actually change the custom values within the scene as well. So you can make it even uh, more, what is it, diverse. So let's go further in and look at the code of this. So how does that suddenly know how to manage the gate? Well, we'll go to our program and I'll go to first my level manager. And what the level manager is doing, it's always simply loading a world. Um, sorry, where is it? Loading a world. It's not, I'm not loading any of the models, um, even um, my character is loaded through the world and what it does is it sets object types so you can see here object gate which was that object class that I made before and it sets a container which is sort of like an STL container except a uh, custom essential one called gates which I've specified up here and a gate holds gate classes so basically what that means is when it creates that object um, when it loads that object from the thing, from the scene, it will use my custom gate class, which I'll take you to right now, um, to create that object. Now my custom gate class has to inherit from one of the um, essential object classes, in this case uh, object static, but you can um, inherit from a bunch of different types. If you I'll have a I'll show you quickly. Uh, so the base base type is object. It's the simplest you can get. And then there's all sorts, static, kinematic. There's even a character one. Or you can make your own. Um, nothing stopping you. But for this one, static is good enough. And I simply overwrite a bunch of the functions. Um, and you can see here, I've overwritten the create function for the gate, which is called when it's loaded into the scene. And I've extracted those parameters that were in that um, uh, table. So hang on, where is it? Objects. So this code here, what it's doing is it's um, this object is actually the the, per, the whole parameter table um, that is automatically passed when it's loaded. Now I, I create the static object. Um, I call the uh, the super create function as well. And then I, I get all these parameters out of this thing with using this code here, find parameter, which is really super convenient. And now it gets even better. This is where I can actually get um, the doors and load them. So door L, which is a mesh, and door R, which is a mesh. And then it actually goes to these elements here and gets the ID and then loads the mesh, which is super cool. I love that. And I simply set the matrixes for the doors, and it's all sweet sailing. So um, then, of course, there's the update function, which also um, overwrites uh, the, the static classes update function. And you'll notice that I'm still calling the the um, static classes um, update function as well at the end. I've just added my own code and extended it, um, so you can see. Yeah, and same for draw and draw shadow. So it's 
in this way, um, this sounds is very different to what Leadworks was. Um, you control the rendering completely. These draw functions are um, called automatically, but I can set what they are. Um, so basically what it's doing is um, it's checking if it's valid, it's checking if it's within the frust frustum, it's setting the material to use. Oh, I'm missing a, um, something. And then it's drawing the mesh with its um, scale um, scale matrix, and then it's drawing the doors with their matrices, which I had to do. This mesh's matrix was all automatically done. So you can see there's a bit of insight into how it works. It's really flexible, and I love it. I love how you have the control over the shadows. Uh, I mean, over um, the drawing of things. It's I think one of my favorite parts is that um, you can. Well, it's not that amazing, but you can draw shadows even if you don't draw the mesh. Now, that might sound not very useful, but for me it is because I have walls going invisible so the player can see the scene, and but I don't want the walls to stop casting shadows and letting light get outside of the room. So I can still draw the shadows. Um, so yeah, all these objects um, in this world that you can see here are the same sort of thing. Um, not these static props, so they don't really do anything, so they're just a, a standard thing, but the walls, they have, they are derived from a um, static class and they simply um, check the camera angle and disappear if necessary. They've got their own data as well, as you can see, the min and max angle that they're viewable from. And, and the door and even these lights are um, a custom things. I've even got a little object, a dummy object for the camera data. So very flexible. Now, I think I got a bit sidetracked there. I was telling you about my gate, so I'll go back to that quickly. Uh, Alright, so I had to make a few changes um, to the linear insulation to get that right and a few other changes um, that I made and basically I was overcomplicating it. I didn't quite understand um, how the linear interpolation of Essential works, but trial and error, and I got it right. I just took out this whole bunch of crap because I misunderstood what step was. Now I just have to have the speed. So it's, it's it ends up being exactly the same as the Leadworks one, whereas I thought it was different based on the description. So that's that. And then the second thing, I took out all this bunch of crappy code and just um, did a float compare. Um, between the current offset and the destination offset. Because it's linear interpolated, uh, it won't let the current offset um, surpass the destination offset, so I can just do a float compare, which is um, just a utility function that I made, as you do. Oh, get lost. And so I take out all that code, where am I, all that code, and in the end, the simpler works the best, so and I'll show you how that looks. Back in the game, <laughs> did some things, stuffing around with the uh, menu and stuff, okay, so here's our door, and I press 1 to close it. Two to open it, three to half open it. That also fixed the um, problem where I was, if I press the same one, the doors would go. So now that I've got that done, I'm ready to make them into physics bodies that will um, actually obstruct the path mesh and objects, as well as make sound for it and make it triggered. Thanks for watching.